Drow. During this series, I've discussed a number of different types of creatures that dwell in deep, dark places underneath the earth. Creatures that have adapted to lightless caverns and dank tunnels, carving out lives separated from typical society. The drow are similar to these types of creatures in various ways, but being a sapient race, they have their own distinct culture, society, religion, and aspirations. Drow appear far more often as foes rather than allies, and while there are certain examples of their species that drastically break away from their brethren's wicked ways, by and large they are shunned and feared by the wide world. This video will take a brief look at the Drow way of life, their matriarchal society, and their fealty to the Spider Queen. Drow were first mentioned in the AD&D 1st Edition Monster Manual in 1977, created by Gary Gygax and based around the Dark Elves of Norse mythology. The text describes them as only legend, supposedly dwelling deep beneath the surface in a strange realm. They are said to be dark and evil, weak at fighting but strong with magic. They would be given specific statistics in the first Fiend Folio in 1981, and presented as a possible player character choice in Unearthed Arcana from 1985. The most famous drow, Drist Doerden, would be introduced in a novel by R. A. Salvatore in 1988, and would be featured in many novels afterwards. Drow would appear in the second monstrous compendium for AD&D 2nd edition, featuring expanded info on Drow society, and the first complete source book on Drow, the Drow of the Underdark, would be released in 1991. For third, fourth, and fifth editions, Drow would be featured in the base monster manual of each edition, alongside plenty of different adventures and supplements featuring Drow and Drow cities. For this video, we'll primarily be using the second version of the Drow of the Underdark, released in 2007 for 3.5 edition. Just as there are Wood Elves and High Elves, so too are there Dark Elves, or Drow, that have separated from the overall species of Elf. Depending on the story, they are either an original, separate species of Elf, or more commonly, they were Elves that lost a civil war with other Elves long ago and were exiled. In this case, the original drow were seen as selfish and cruel, and lost a war against their more benevolent brethren, at which point they were cast down and exiled into the Underdark, deep beneath the earth. Drow typically appear as dark-skinned, with pale white hair, with wiry and athletic bodies, standing on average around 5 feet tall. They share plenty of common physical traits with most elves including their dexterity and gracefulness in movement. Drow are notably intelligent and clever, but by and large they are almost entirely evil, sharing traits of arrogance, sadism, cruelty, and deceitfulness. Because of the combination of intelligence and evil, Drow society is a rather unique thing. Contrary to what you might expect, which would involve the society rapidly collapsing due to personal ambition, their society continues based on a focus around the community rather than the self. In fact, drow hold an individual's abilities or accomplishments by themselves to be practically meaningless, as the only true measure of importance is how thoroughly and effectively a drow can direct, shape, and change their society. Or in other words, a drow's worth in their society is based around how much authority and control they have over the society, although an individual typically comes into that authority and control through their abilities and accomplishments. By contrast then, a drow with no authority or control at the moment is utterly worthless to others, regardless of their natural abilities or past accomplishments. A weak drow, therefore, has practically no value, existing only as a commodity to be traded and abused by those of more worth, with no repercussions for even murder. 
Because of this way of life, Drow society is dictated by a hierarchy of the dominant versus the submissive, as a fellow drow is either someone with more power than you, who must be appeased and placated, someone with equal power, who should be exploited for one's own advancement, or less power, who are used for little other than labor or disposable troops. Further coloring the society is the difference between male and female drow, but first I should explain Lolth. Lolth, or the Queen of Spiders, is a dark goddess that over time, both directly and indirectly, has formed the drow into what they currently are. Lolth embodies many of the same traits as drow, as their society has been shaped in order to please her. She favors the powerful, clever, conniving, and duplicitous members of the drow, and abhors the weak, gullible, sympathetic, and foolish members. Lolth's favor can change in a moment, and she'll often test those in power to see if they're still worthy of their position. These tests include forcing the subject to slay a relative or ally, fighting a powerful monster, or being covered by a swarm of venomous spiders, none of which the subject is allowed to harm. Faith and worship of Lolth is a core aspect of Drow society, not out of love for the deity, but out of fear. This fear comes from two sources, one being Lolth herself, of course, but also from the Drow priestesses, some of the most influential members of Drow society, who ruthlessly enforce worship. As for the specifics of worship, much of it revolves around sacrifices, either symbolic, such as pouring out wine or burning wealth, or blood sacrifice, generally of sentient creatures. Quick prayers are often said by Drow at the start of a day, or before entering a dangerous situation, not for Lolth's aid, but instead as a request to be tested, so that they can prove their strength and skills. Since Lolth has been so involved in the development of the Drow, and Lolth herself is a female, it's not surprising at all that females by and large hold better positions in Drow society over males. Female drow are seen as stronger, smarter, more emotionally controlled, and in general, holier in the eyes of the Spider Queen compared to males. Males are mostly seen as useful tools for labor and reproduction. Females tend to hold all of the highest positions of authority, including priestesses of Lolth and heads of the great houses. Ambitious males might find other paths to power, though becoming well-known teachers, or reaching high ranks in the drow military. In the lower ranks of society, both males and females can hold the same types of jobs, as a weak drow is of little note, regardless of gender. The most powerful members of drow society, aside from the highest priestesses of Lolth, are the matriarchs that run the various great houses, who might also be priestesses themselves. These houses comprise the matriarch and her blood relations, as well as anyone with the slightest blood tie to the central family, including those who marry into the family. Other individuals can be adopted into the family by the matron's decision, if there is a political advantage to doing so. These various great houses govern different industries, districts, and communities, not through any formal laws, but because it would be incredibly foolish for anyone of lower position to challenge them. This hierarchy of power is unilaterally followed in some form by every member of Drow society, so a powerful great house can rule because they are powerful. Since ambition is such a core aspect of the Drow, however, this leads to a large amount of politics, treachery, secrecy, and paranoia between all of the different houses. Since a single house could, in theory, grow so powerful as to control and rip apart an entire community, Lolth will occasionally command her priestesses to coordinate and directly intervene. In other words, Drow society only continues as it does because Lolth commands it. Despite all the talk of treachery and backstabbing, Drow life often goes on much like most sapient races 
albeit living deep underground with lots of spiders everywhere. Drow tend to eat mostly fungi, meat from various subterranean creatures or from humanoid slaves, and surprisingly, spider meat. Upper class drow throw the occasional feast or ball, partly for political purposes, of course, and they enjoy potent wines and hallucinogenics as well. Sports and games are also played, and many drow spend their free time creating art and music, usually religious in nature, and often disturbing to outsiders. In combat, drow warriors vastly prefer an ambush over open conflict, and in war they will focus on tactics involving assassinating the opposition's officers and rulers. Drow value the offensive over the defensive, as it's easier for them to rally around a vicious attack than determine who is in command in a defensive situation. Drow will attack the cities of other races, but will also attack other drow cities, and there are plenty of civil wars that break out between houses. These civil wars are short-lived though, since if one house doesn't immediately take over another, a coalition forms to squash the offender. As for above ground, drow typically abhor the light, so accustomed to the darkness of their homes, and so they will only head to the surface under the cover of night, for short raids. On the surface, they will capture any surface dwellers they can for slave labor, food, or other purposes. They share a particular hatred for surface elves, as the drow have a long memory of the ancient war between their races. In tune with their society, those without power are worthless, and for the drow, everyone that is not a drow is weak. A notable trait of drow equipment, strong as it is, is that the metal it is composed of is degraded by sunlight, sometimes to the point of disintegration. They also tend to enchant their magical items to have similar effects, so that no surface dweller can enjoy things crafted by the drow. As mentioned, not all drow are evil, as evident by the famous ranger, Drist de Urden. A drow infant raised on the surface by kind people could easily grow up to be a well-adjusted individual, although the common stigma against all of the drow would make such a feat quite rare. There are a certain subsection of drow living in drow cities that aren't quite as evil as the others, more neutral in alignment but being soft-hearted is a quick path to getting trampled on in drow society. Many of these individuals will act evil simply due to the pressure of society, while a very rare few will manage to escape to the surface for another life, such as Drist. This video is very far from comprehensive when it comes to drow life, society, and culture. While they are often simply thrown at the adventuring party if they wander through the Underdark, the nature of such a unique race has inspired plenty of writings over the years. The drow will very likely never act as a considerable threat to the surface dwellers of the world, since they are very far from any sense of cohesion, but being captured by a drow raiding party in the dead of night is certainly an incredibly terrifying fate.